Hello, Sean from AED here. This video will show you what the parameters you data log actually are for, what they mean. This is a data log that I've done on the dyno of a customer's vehicle. Here's RPM. This is a basic one. Everybody should know that this is an RPM trace. That should be pretty easy. I'm going to keep RPM up just because I like to keep it up when I'm looking at things. First one on the list is air intake temp sensor in Fahrenheit 2. This should be the downstream air temp. And unfortunately in this data log it did not work. I chose the wrong PID and did not correct it. This would be raw air temp in Fahrenheit for the incoming air into the engine. If it's boosted, you choose number two and you have an air temp sense two in it. Uh, it will actually show you the after boost temp past the intercooler. This is valuable for boosted applications. NOx sensor, the big one that everybody gets concerned with. This is actually NOx sensor retard. So when it is a positive number, it is retarding ignition timing by that amount because it senses NOx. A negative number is the opposite. The NOx sensors are adding timing. ECU is saying we have no instances of NOx here. We can add timing and that's exactly what it does. So positive is bad, negative is good. We will get into more detail on further videos as far as, far as what to do about NOC. Lamsey, Lamsey, bank one, bank two. Bank one is always this number one cylinder, the side with the number one cylinder, which is a passenger side on a Ford. Bank two is driver's side, so pay attention to that. Lamsey is the commanded air fuel, commanded fueling, excuse me, not air fuel. Lamsey, these all the wide bands are actual lambda meters. They read in lambda only. They do not know air fuel. It is software that calculates air fuel. So in order to calculate your air fuel, you need to know the stoic. So it is air fuel is stoic times lambda. So in this case, 14.08 in a factory calibration times 1.01. .01, we're at about 14.1 air fuel. 14.1 parts air to one part fuel. If you're running ethanol, it could be in the nines, and at 10 lambda, it would be nine to one air fuel. If you're calculating at wide open throttle, it would be lambda 0.785 <clears throat> multiplied by your stoic equals your actual air fuel. But in general, we tune off of lambda. These are lambda controlled vehicles. Lambda takes ethanol content out uh, as a variable because ethanol content varies greatly in this country. For instance, in California, Shell gasoline has 15% ethanol, as much as 15% ethanol in 87 octane. 89 octane has 10%, 91 is 7%. But across the street at a Chevron station, it's going to be completely different. Since we don't keep track of the ethanol content in every single tank that we put in, Ford actually made these wideband controlled vehicles to make it easier for us and for the software to account for varying ethanol blends. As such, we use Lambda as an easy way to essentially ignore the ethanol blend and dial it in, dial in the vehicle. 10 Lambda is 10 Lambda, 0.8 Lambda is 0.8 Lambda. It doesn't matter what fuel it is, the actual air fuel depends on the stoic that you have programmed into the vehicle. And that's where programming the correct stoic comes into play. However, once again, you know, the difference between 7% and 15% ethanol is easily accounted for by the fuel trims, which is why we have wide bands that are closed loop. So Lamsey in this data log is commanded fueling. So we're commanding 1.0 roughly fueling at part throttle and at idle. At wide open throttle, we're commanding much, much richer. Measured is the actual air fuel. So in this case, Measured at this point in the RPM is 0.787 on bank one where we're commanding 0.785. So the O2's measured is the actual reading from the O2 sensor. The difference between measured and commanded shows up as fuel trims. So it would be the ECU trimming the fuel, either adding fuel or subtracting fuel in order to achieve the uh, desired Lamsey as measured. In this case, it's very, very close. It's less than 1% off. The ECU is actually pulling anything under 1.0. It's pulling fuel. Anything over 1.0, it's adding fuel. In this case, this, this MAF curve 
is within 1% of ideal at 5,800 RPM, so it's perfect. So again, commanded is Lamsey, measured is actual. The difference between those two is fuel trims. Now, short-term fuel trims are instant. Long-term fuel trims are saved in the Keep Alive memory. So if the ECU has said that at X RPM and load, uh, it's always pulling fuel by X percent, it's going to move that from the short terms over into the long terms and the short term gets reset to 1.0. So in this case, it would move 0.984 over to long terms, keep it there until you do a keep live memory reset, which is why we do request keep live memory resets sometimes if we've in the middle of tuning, it's already adjusted and uh, it just gets, you know, one's adding, one's, one's subtracting, it gets a little frustrating. <clears throat> okay. Math. Math flow rate in pounds per minute. This we do want to see. We also want to see math frequency. This is in Hertz. So over here at wide open throttle, we're going to see <clears throat> math flow rate and math uh, frequency. This is specifically for dialing in the math curve. If we look here, I'll scroll down right there. Eight, 8.772 in this math curve. If we look at this data point, 8772, 34.72 pounds per minute. <clears throat> in this calibration, we're actually at 63. So this is a boosted application. And um, <clears throat> the math curve is dead nuts on because we have no fuel trimming whatsoever. Measured air fuel is matching Lamsey. So it means that our math curve is perfect. Um, <clears throat> So that's a good thing. But this is what you're looking for. Math flow rate in pounds per minute is an indication of actual horsepower. So this is an easy way to do it. You can do the calculation, find the calculation online to get it accurate. But I just blanketly multiply this by 10. That's an indication of flywheel horsepower. So at 7,000 RPM, we're making roughly 630 flywheel. And of course, what we're really looking for here, we don't want to see that a vehicle that's making 400 horsepower to the tires is pushing 63 pounds per minute. That would be an indication something is majorly scaled wrong in the tune and vice versa. We don't want to see a 600 horsepower car having 40 pounds per minute. Okay, so this is why injector and math data is critical, specifically injector data. If your injector data is off, you will bake in error into the math. And that's what we want to avoid by getting accurate data. Because in the end, the math also calculates load and Newton meters of torque, which we are not data logging here, um, which is actually how these transmissions will shift. It's, it's torque-based shifting. We have torque-based drivability. We do not want to have errors in our injector data that that cause us to compensate via the math curve because our tune's going to be off. Okay, so that's the math data. It's used for tuning. Spark Advance, Spark Advance V2. Um, these two are used as an indication of what the uh, cylinders are doing. These run individual cylinder um, ignition timing, just like individual cylinder fueling, so they can run different in uh, ignition timing on different cylinders. The long and the short of it is, is that Ford does reduce ignition timing in a factory calibration on the number one cylinder, number five cylinder, number four cylinder, and number eight cylinder. This is in firing order. This is first in the firing order, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. This is a multiplier to this table over here, which is for the individual cylinder fueling. So essentially, it's negative two multiplied by zero up to 4,500 and then at 5,000 negative two times one is negative two. So on the third cylinder in the firing order at 5,000 RPM, Ford is actually removing two degrees of ignition timing. Uh, this cylinder number fourth in the firing order is actually the number eight cylinder. It removes more. We're mo removing three degrees in a factory calibration. Keep that in mind. So we want to see both spark advance and V2 because we want to see the high and the low. If we only see one, what is it? Are we looking at the high? Are we looking at the low? We don't actually know. 
uh, and because it can vary two to three degrees per cylinder, I want both in there. Throttle angle, actual. Throttle, I have throttle angle actual and desired. You don't have to do desired. Um, we normally are pretty close in our calibrations that desired and actual are going to be very close together. Um, shouldn't have to worry about desired. We've done all the R&D in-house. Actual throttle angle I do want to see. I want to make sure that you know, you're putting your foot through the, through the floorboard when at, for the wide open throttle pull. I don't want to see it varying squiggly line here and fueling is all over the place and you know spark and everything's out of whack. Um, throttle angle is what I actually want to see. Note that wide open throttle is 82 degrees. I went over it in a previous video, but if you didn't watch that, this is specifically because Ford recalculates the idle throttle angle as zero every time you turn the key on. So idle throttle angle in this calibration, because it's a GT500 throttle body, is likely about six degrees. Six degrees plus 82 is 88. You're in the shadow of the throttle shaft and it's wide open throttle. <clears throat> Torque source. Torque source will tell us where the torque is coming from, uh, the actual source uh, that, that the ECU is pulling the data from. So zero in this case, driver demand on D cell. It will go to torque source six, which is tip out torque. Uh, there's a blip in there of 16, I'm sure. And then this will be nine, which is uh, stabilizing the idle and then goes back to driver demand. There's gonna be oscillation is number 13 in here. There's gonna be a few different ones. It's a, uh, it's a valuable tool if we're running into any odd issues. It'll give us an indication of where to look in the tune. There are the source values that we have identified are beyond 16, but um, there's even more coming. They just keep getting more and more complicated. Variable cam timing, <clears throat> exhaust bank one and intake bank one. Uh, this is going to tell us the actual cam timing. You could do bank one, you could do bank two. They should be identical unless you have a hardware problem. Um, key here that I want you to take note is the uh, the exhaust cam timing right here at <clears throat> 1200 RPM, 30 degrees, okay? Over here at wide open throttle, intake cam timing, negative 50. So this is the uh, intake cam advanced 50 degrees over here, and the exhaust cam is retarded 30 degrees over here. That's a total of 80 degrees of overlap if they were together, which normally they aren't, but the point of this is we do not command that much cam timing during the idle loop. We command no more cam timing than at any other point during normal drivability with these vehicles. In other words, for those of you that question the idle loop saying that it's hard on the VCT, it is not. We do not push the VCT anywhere that Ford hasn't already designed them to go. So don't worry about it. You will hear increased noise at idle from the VCT actuators. They do make noise when the uh, when it when it does move the camshafts away from zero and zero. Uh, you just don't notice it at wide open throttle when you're driving because the exhaust is louder. And when we do the idle loop at idle, yeah, now you can hear the actual VCT actuators making some noise. Anyways, this is a uh, brief rundown of what we're looking at with the data log, and thank you for tuning in.